I'm your moderator, Bonnie Farrar. Um, I think we can all agree that Way Hot is everybody's thing. These two characters have shown us that true love can be found when you least expect it. Like, let's say, when the taps at Shorty's are broken. And sometimes love can take us on unexpected journeys of acceptance and self-discovery. Yet as much as we love Way Hot, it's the two women who bring them to life that we love even more. Off screen, they both lead their lives with love, kindness, and an inspiring enthusiasm for life that makes us all want to be a little better and leave the world a little brighter. So please help us welcome the women behind Way Hot, the very lovely Captain Burrell and Dominique Provo Chalkley. <laughs> Welcome back to Erpercon UK. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys have played Way Hot now for three seasons. Yep. Four years. True. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. So yep. how has that journey and, and, and this fandom and everything that's happened to the characters and to both of you changed how you approach playing your characters? That's a good question, isn't it? We're just jumping right in. We're just wow. jumping right in. Poor cats just got off a flight this morning, which is like madness. Uh, oh. Mine is on, I think. So is mine. Hello. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I don't know if there's volume. No, it's just nope. on or off. Here we go. Um, well, I would say I do try to like let that stuff go a little bit when we go to work, mm -hmm. yeah. because I think it's really good to try as best you can to sort of. For, I mean, as amazing as all this is, also to like remove yourself and get back into the world of it, because I think, I think it could lead to overthinking, perhaps, and yeah. and maybe making decisions that don't serve the story in the best way. I would um, say, ooh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I would <laughs> say, <laughs> hello. Um, I would say I've gone through like waves of it as well, yeah. where it has, you know, when we first started, obviously we didn't know that there was going to be this amazing. Uh, following for Way Hot, mm -hmm. so it wasn't even a thing. And then when we first realized like how much everybody was attached to, to the relationship and how much we had to take care of it, I think um, it definitely affected, I think probably both of us, would you say, when we yeah. first, like uh, after Clexicon that first year. Like the just, like, second oh season. God, yeah. Really, do you really like it? And like, yeah. what does that mean? And we have to protect it and, and um, mm -hmm. yeah, just really respect the, the relationship and how we play it. And, and then, of course, that, like you say, leads to overthinking. And then it was a, a journey of coming out of that on the other side of saying, no, we have to trust ourselves and Emily and the work that we've done to build up the relationship, how it is, and just try and play it as truthfully as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and true to the script. Yeah. So you guys... Um, We're really far away from you. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Snuggle okay. in. This is the way hard. Oh, okay. um, so, you know, you both have, have been on social media now. It's been three years. And it's, it's, a, it's a hard balance to, to balance social media with your, your own life, but also protecting your characters and the script and, and what Emily has done. Has that been challenging for you at all to try to find that balance between... Again, we've both been on journeys with social mm -hmm. media, I would say, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Social media is like a very interesting beast. What I've started doing recently is I actually will just, I delete it right off my phone for like three, five days, just to take a, I didn't do anything wrong, it's not bad. Um, I just was moving uh, and I was lifting a lot of stuff and I just injured it a little bit, so this is just to protect it. So it heals, because I thought I was getting arthritis in my joint, I got really scared. And then I thought, I'll tape it for a few days, and it actually started to feel better, so I think it was just an injury. So it's all good. Um, yeah, so social media, so that's what, I've, that's what I've started doing recently this year. I, felt, I feel like right now is the most re removed, kind of healthiest relationship I've had with social media in a while, because I, I, I actually feel when I delete it, I do feel like a little bit of like, a huh. So that's how I know it's good for me to take these breaks. So and I'll just take it right off the phone so I don't get, I also just didn't like that I was kind of aimlessly scrolling through Instagram and I started to put that timer, the app timer on my phone. I was horrified of how much 
time and I don't even honestly use it that much and it was still a lot of time and I just thought I think this could be better spent so for me the discipline has to be to get it off the phone and then I don't just do it mindlessly and for me the discipline is going on it every now and again <laughs> and being like oh shit I haven't been on Instagram in ages or I haven't posted anything and I know how you know people are hoping that I do every now and again so for me the discipline is making sure that I do go on every now and again sorry <laughs> I'm still alive well one of the ways that I love how both of you use your social media is to inspire all of us to make a difference and to change the world a little bit whether it's through pet rescue, uh, whether it's through, uh, you know, water, you know, throwing away your water bottles and you, you go in thrift shopping. Um, if you could tell everybody what, what small change do you think people could make that would make the biggest difference? Is there just like one thing where you're like, if everyone did, did this, we could have the most impact? It's a really good question. I tried. Like, <laughs> trust me, I've been racking my brain on this one for quite a long time. Um, do you want to take it first? No, I would love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that the, the biggest thing we can all do is to... Blah, blah, blah. Imagine, imagine the pearls of wisdom. Anyone can finish off the rest of the sentence. <laughs> um, no, I think actually it's to uh, meditate and to find yourself... Um, because uh, through meditation or whatever you want to call it, mindfulness, in whatever form you want to get there, I think that um, finding who you are at your core um, without all of the excess noise um, really um, allows you to then find what you can bring to the table, which is not, you're never gonna, I, I don't think that you can sit here and say, you should do this and you should do that. I think everybody needs to find it for themselves or what's authentic to them because you can't do something well if it's not coming from a place of truth and a place for yourself. So I think that that's probably what I would say. That is super wise. Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. I didn't articulate it very well, but I appreciate no, it. No, you really did. <laughs> Shit, wow, uh, what do I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest like a message on that I would promote on social media, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, you know, I think it, I think it would just be that social media is a beautiful, fun thing that we get to engage in, but it's not real. It's not real life, and never to compare yourself. Obviously, you know, to, we all know that, but it can be very easy to compare ourselves to friends or that look like they're living these amazing lives. And, I like those shirts that people wear that says, I hope your life is as wonderful as, it, as you pretend it is on Instagram. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, that it's a fun tool and it can be amazing. I also think it's affecting a lot of really young people right now. I, I love that Instagram got rid of the, the like counter or whatever that was. And oh, yeah, that's yeah, nice. I really like that. So how new is that? Because I only just noticed it, which I think is quite uh, I don't think it's that. Okay. Well, I just ha noticed it a few weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. Um, that's not really a pearl of wisdom, but I just think that it's, you know, Instagram is another form of media, and we all know that media is manipulated, and it's there to entertain us, but it's not there to give us a true barometer of real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, talking about trying to uh, journeys and truth, uh, Dominique, you've been on some pretty amazing adventures over the last several years. Uh -huh. How has, uh, I mean, I'm always excited to see you because I'm always like, where have you been next? Like, where are you next? You know, it, it's, it's really exciting. So how has, uh, in your travels, how has that changed you and your perspective on the world? My goodness. How long have you got? <laughs> About 45 uh, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, um, yeah, of course, every, every new place I go, I learn so much about myself and about the world, and um, that's a given. I'm actually now learning that I need some stability in my life, actually, which has come up and, and I think is a really important one for me to listen to. So I had to kind of come full circle to realizing that, like, you know, it's all been amazing adventures, but um, the power of community is... Uh, so important and finding your people and finding people that you can lean on um, 
because it can be quite a lonely experience in the same way as I mean like all of these amazing people all the time and have very strong connections very quickly. Um, but it's not real life in the same way that, you know, the, the sort of when you're at home, you have routine. Um, I think it's really important. So I think I'm, I think I'm growing up a lot and it's definitely helped me figure out those, these years that have been about learning about myself and it's kind of plummeted me um, to a lot of knowing, but now I'm, I'm coming back to some, some really important truths, which is that I need to come back around and sort of um, settle a little bit and be okay with that. Yeah. Someone once told me, uh, you know, don't forget your wings, but, but really don't forget your roots too, mm -hmm. that you need both, you know? Right, yeah. So yeah, that's neat. If I'm honest, I just haven't, re I don't really know where home is. Like I haven't really found that yet. So I think that a lot of it also was like trying to figure out where I fit. Mm -hmm. um, I've often felt a little bit like an alien sometimes. <laughs> um, and, and I think quite a lot of people, a lot of, lots of people that I've spoken to recently can relate to that feeling. And because I moved away and because I have two cultures and dual citizenship, like I never really felt 100% British and I've always felt like there was that other side that I needed to explore and then obviously I was so fortunate with Winona that it brought me to Canada and really like, f yeah, found that part of it and then it was sort of just continue going until I sort of find a place but really you can make anywhere home, you know, it's not a place that's going to be home, I think it's much more a sensation of like the people you find and all of that, so yeah, I, I, I think, I'm, so, I think I'm, 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 I'm at a place now where I'm like, okay, I'm going to calm down a little bit because <laughs> it's been a bit extreme. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so going in a slightly different direction, yeah. I, um, when I said about roots, I often find it hard to, to describe this fandom and the show uh, to people who I know who don't watch it necessarily, but uh, Kat, if you, have you ever had to describe what a way hot is to anybody in your life? <laughs> I'm trying to think. Um, what what way hot is? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, way hot is just the relationship between Nicole and Waverly on the show. Yeah. yeah. But I get asked that a lot. Like, what's a way hot? You know. Well, what's a way hot? Mm -hmm. what? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's even yeah, that's really my answer. What's a way oh, hot? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah, it would just be. It was just. It's, oh, it's a name for the relationship that these characters have on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. I think. Yeah, I think it was like. Yeah. Did I, did I miss, did no. I misunderstand? Like, have you ever had a situation where somebody oh. has said like, oh, no. said um, like, what's a way hot or like? No. Well, trying to explain, um, cause I'm working on uh, this other show right now and trying to explain where I was coming this weekend was like mm -hmm. a little bit, <laughs> it's like, well, they're like, oh, so it's one of those big con, like, well, no, it's just for Winona Earp. And they're like, it's just for Winona Earp. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's something very special. It's very hard to articulate to, to somebody that doesn't understand the fandom and the community and how would all these people come from all over the world to this one place, like what do you do all day? And you know what I mean? Like it's, but it's also, you know, the, a lot of the words that come up are really special, once in a lifetime community. Um, and I think, they, I think that they, they get it. They get the feeling. Yeah. But I, I always just want to be like, you should just come to one and then you'll immediately understand. Like my writing partner came to the one in, uh, in Toronto so I was like, I really feel like you just need to come and feel the energy. What did she think of it? I mean, she thought it was amazing. Mm. She felt she felt empowered. She felt seen. She loved the panels. She, I mean, you know, as uh, she she totally got it, and she understood it before. But there's something about really being in the energy or being in the fandom online that it's a it's a deeper understanding. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. feel it. So what's the best piece of advice that you've been given in your career? <laughs> oh. Just gonna throw it out there. Best piece of advice someone else has given me. Ooh. Oh, I, I remember when I graduated from theater school, I was so concerned about, should I do TV or should I do theater? Because I trained in theater and I was so concerned about having to make that decision. And I remember my friend's dad was a, he's a, was an acting professor and he, not of mine, but at a different school, and he said that the industry will choose for you. And um, 
because I'm always a personality, like I really want to control things and kind of, you know, carve the path before I walk it. And um, that was a really good a piece of advice for me because it sort of allowed me to surrender to the process. And the process of this business is insane and scary and completely unpredictable. And um, that was a really good piece of advice that I needed to hear at that time, just to like sort of surrender a little bit. And it does, it, it sort of places you where you need to be, mm -hmm. I think. For me, it did anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't. I can't really think of anything. Um, nothing's coming to my head right now, to be honest. So I don't okay. really just want to make <laughs> make something up. Um, I I met a, a very important person in in my early career when I was in Dirty Dancing, and she was playing my mum on the show. And I had many a conversation with her that really um, informed how I sort of attacked everything. And mm -hmm. she, yeah, you know, when you just meet someone that has just so much wisdom and it was like the most was such a nice friendship because she was you know in her 50s and I was like a young girl 1920 and um, we had such a, a strong connection and yeah she really just helped me see it clearly because I think at that age it's very can be very overwhelming of like not knowing where you're gonna go or how how, it, how it's gonna go and sort of like that calming energy so she would probably be the person I think but I can't think of any particular I think we're going to open it up to questions here in a minute. So if you guys, uh, we'll get someone will get the mic. But um, I wanted to ask. So I had Melanie and Danny on a panel a couple hours ago, and so I asked them this question, and I would be interested to see your answer to it. Um, what personality trait of yours has gotten you into the most trouble? I bet Mel's and Danny's answers were fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> what did they say? Oh my gosh. I am just about, I can't even think now. Like, yeah. I'm the question person. I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Danny said she was the trouble. She just starts the trouble. She doesn't get into it. That's what she said. The trouble. She is the trouble. Fair enough. <laughs> I think somebody said to me at a con, and Erper came up to me and she said, because I said, I, I have a problem with authority, but I don't have a problem with authority. I have a problem with abuse of power. And she, she told me that. I was like, yes. Um, probably that stubbornness, probably the like sort of refusal to, um, I also have a really hard time when I can tell that people are speaking down to me because I'm a woman. Oof. Drives me. I had my superintendent of my building come into my place the other day, and he was so sexist to me, and like only referred to my husband and didn't speak to me, and I almost lost it. I was so pissed, and Ray could tell he was like, "I'm so sorry. That was horrible." I'm like, yeah. So that sort of thing. I just can't seem. I can't hold my tongue, and I I can get myself into some trouble that way of just. I get pissed really easily with stuff like that. I'm a bit fiery. I have a, yeah. Anything that's unjust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything, like, in that same vein, when mm -hmm. I was in Brazil, I found it really hard, actually, because mm -hmm. nobody would talk to me uh, if there was a man present. Like, it would be very, very difficult to... And I mean, I don't speak Portuguese, so maybe that's got something to do with it, too. But I was <laughs> trying really hard, you know. Um, but yeah, anything that, that isn't fair, to someone else, not me. When it's me, I'm just like, Ooh, and I, I don't speak my mind as, as well as I should. But when it's anybody else, especially somebody that I care about, um, yeah. But, I, but, yeah. Yeah. but my personality trait, I don't really have a very fiery personality, so that doesn't really get me in trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> Do we have questions? Oh, oh, okay. Um, so we can talk a lot about like stop the wave and what you can do, and we have a little thing here. And so I was wondering if like your characters would start a fundraiser or charity. What do you think it would be? Oh, cool. <laughs> can we do it together? I mean, or separately, but that's awesome. A way hot fundraiser. Oof. 
What's Nicole into in that kind of thing? Well, I mean, she loves nature. She loves yeah. the outdoors. She's probably, I would say, like super conservation. Something with trees. Mm. Planting trees. Planting trees or some sort of planting trees with. There was a cool thing Mel posted the other day where it was you post your picture of you filling up before your flight your water bottle so you don't use the plastic and, and I forget the airline now but they plant one tree for every hashtag or something like this. Go to Mel's um, Instagram, speaking of, and uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. I will definitely. Yeah. Um. I feel like Waves would definitely do something with like spreading the love and kindness, acceptance, um, probably, yeah, like, you know, like kind of like the kindness cards where like just dropping little bit, bits of love and kindness around purgatory just to remind everyone that they're beautiful and to smile. And I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. Thanks, Thanks that. That You can just yell them out. We can repeat them too. If Hi. Um, I just want to say that uh, I came here from Slovenia, Europe, if you know Slovenia, what that is. Slovenia, really? Yes. Yeah, that's where my family's from. Uh, and uh, like in the show, you have a lot of uh, beautiful moments, uh, emotional moments that you play really well. And I want to know, do you want to share any of that kind of moments that happened to you in your real life? Ooh. Any intimate moments that happened to us in our real life? <laughs> Sorry. Emotional, like beautiful moments. Special moments from yeah, our lives. Yeah. Special moments. Special. Happy yeah. memory. Happy memory. Oh. Childhood. You know? Huh? I thought same thing. Um, when my dad drove me and my mom in the night to Paris and we woke up under the suspension bridge had a cup of tea under the suspension bridge. I was like, oh, look where you are. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. That's awesome. Um, mine would be, oh, well, speaking of Slovenia, I was there a few months ago this past summer with my mother for the first time as she was born there. Um, and uh, my, my grandparents grew up, um, my mom was very, very, they were incredibly poor and um, had like a kind of a, I saw the house, if you could even really call it that, that they kind of lived in, and my, it was insane, it was so crazy, and my mom and my, my grandmother's 93-year-old brother met us, and he walked my mom and I down to the well where my grandmother would go to get water. Whoa. It was like a really bittersweet but really beautiful moment to walk that, and he, and he was telling us stories how my mom would like cry because she didn't want to walk so my grandma would have to go pick her up and take her down that it was like a down a hill to a well a well guys like literally pigs them cows well that was it wow. and uh it was a it was a really happy moment because my mom had been dreaming of this moment when we were all together in this place that was so important to our family wow. for her whole life and my whole life so that's so cool. Okay. Mm. We, we've had some, some beautiful way hot moments. We've also had a couple of, of, of you know, arguments or disagreements. Um, so who do you think of your characters would be the first to say, I'm sorry? Oh, I think it depends on the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. What's happened? Come on. What's happened? Lay it <laughs> out. Give us some context. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's all, in a relationship, there's always one person that's just a bit more like, look, I'm going to take that apologize step, be, be apologize, or, or like come and find you and be like, look, we shouldn't fight. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always that one person that's a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know. Hmm? <laughs> I 
want to say it's Nicole. I think you think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like I don't want to be the one to say it, but yeah, yeah I think it is. 100 agree. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 Yeah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, as actors, how do you choose what roles you go into next? I know you work with your agents and things like that, but how does it work? Is it like, do you kind of choose what you don't <laughs> want to, or do you like, is it like how? <laughs> yeah, do you Wouldn't that be nice? Do you <laughs> but I mean, there's stuff that obviously you'd be like, no, I really don't yeah. want to do that, or are you just like, okay, I need money. <laughs> I'm gonna just like, how, how does it work exactly for you guys? Just really quickly, I had this same question actually from uh, Passport Control. That, uh, <laughs> uh, as I came into the country, I was like, I know you? No way. Yeah, oh, like as he was checking fuck. my thing. Yeah. It was fantastic. I was like, you're an alpha. He was like, yeah. It's like fantastic. So then we ended up having like way too much of a long conversation at Passport Control. Everyone was behind like, what? Um, yeah, I, no. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Um, Will it ever, does it ever get like that? I no, but wonder. you just did a, a movie. You had made a very pretty clear decision that you wanted to work on certain types of things. That, that's what you told me, and it seemed to work out that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Um, generally speaking, like, we get, I mean, it depends on who your agent is and it depends who you are, I suppose, with how many, the quantity of auditions that come in, and it varies depending like mm. what point of the year it is. But you usually get emails with, a breakdown where it tells you a bit about the project and the role and you can get a pretty good idea from that sometimes they attach the script or just the scenes um, and you can get a pretty good feeling as to what it's going to entail would mm -hmm. you say um, yeah I remember someone once told me and I don't know if this has been true for you but usually there's like three factors and you kind of get two so the people are really great the money is really good or the um, project is amazing and usually you're kind of getting two, if you get three, it's like, then you've hit Winona Earp. But then you, <laughs> but then you. <laughs> but usually, like for me, I'm working, um, so I'm working on a show right now called Good Witch. It's on uh, Hallmark. <laughs> and um, I really wanted to be home. So good what shoots in Toronto and for me I was just like we're gonna be in Calgary I just want to be able to like go home and see my family and spend a little put a little more time in with them so I kind of like I mean I was auditioning for stuff that wasn't in Toronto but I my agent was definitely looking a little harder for stuff that was around home and I also think it's like an energy you put out into the world of yeah, this is really kind of the thing I'd like love to have next but usually it's very much like get an email like Dominique said there's a breakdown you do the audition or you put it on tape at home and it goes into ether and usually you never hear anything about it ever again mm. but do, you, do you ever get stuff that's like for you directly like we want you and no one else so you know if you're for directing interested. stuff no for like acting things as well oh, acting things anything that's like that happened great. with Carmilla mm -hmm. oh. Carmilla they did that that they just sort of contacted me and pitched the role to me and said, would you be up for it? And I was like, yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, sometimes, luckily now, sometimes some, some stuff, but some works out, some conflicts with schedule and stuff, but we're both fortunate to be in a position where sometimes we do get offered. Definitely. Freaking lucky, man. It's <laughs> so, this is, business is so crazy, and I just feel like we're both really lucky. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask what kind of school kid were you? Like when you were at school, like were you nerdy or more <laughs> troublemakers or like things like that? Interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I never talked about it before. I, I just remember you have that really great Halloween story. Oh, God. Yeah. No, it's, it's not good. Um, <laughs> I was like, so how I. I was. Uh, I was a, a, like a, definitely a driver kid. What does that mean? A driver like I was, my dad was always like, you know, you gotta try hard, work really hard. My parents were very, such immigrant parents, but very like, work hard, you know. Um, I was a, probably an overscheduled child. <laughs> I think I, I had a little too much going on, but I was, 
I was very much like a driver, busy. I was busy, always wanting to do things. And um, yeah, I think I've slowed down a lot more in the past years, but I've, I've maintained that into adulthood for sure. And then started to realize it maybe wasn't the best thing to always be so crazy busy. But um, what else was I like? <laughs> that was pretty similar. I didn't change too, too much. I was pretty headstrong, a little stubborn, <laughs> definitely qualities that are still there. And um, like, went for what I wanted and pushed, even if I wasn't really supposed to. <laughs> um, I was never like part of any particular group. I was sort of um, somebody that just sort of floated around to the nerds oh, and the... Not, not necessarily, oh. but, but I'm gonna answer it like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and because I was a dancer, I had like my dancing friends, so it would be, you know, doing all that kind of thing and then um, yeah I would just float around and I never was like in with like any particular crew but always sort of like on the outside and um, got along with everyone really um, yeah just sort of went around when I, when I felt like it and yeah. yeah did you have like I had like my two friends and then sort of sort of got along with everyone else but had mm -hmm. two yeah really good best friends I had a bit of a, I, I was part of the music block, block oh, crew for, nice. for one point, there was a music block, so we used to hang out and play piano, <laughs> really cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, hang out in there. But I was, I was pretty dorky, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, I was a very, quite shy, I would say. Um, nervous, school used to make me quite nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys have quotes in your yearbook? Like, do you guys do that stuff? No. Yeah. Can you write in people's yearbooks? No, where like, like usually under your picture oh, you have like yeah. a quote where you say like, this is me, you know, kind of thing. Hmm. I don't, I, we did, I have no idea what I wrote though. <laughs> I'd have to look. Yeah, yeah me yeah. too. I always, uh, ooh, yee. Go, 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 go. I was going to say you there. Hi. <laughs> I've got a question for both of you, if you want to answer it. Um, if Nicole was going to put an advertisement for more police officers in the newspaper, because I have a tendency of dying a lot, what? <laughs> Sorry, what was that last one? Um, I said, if Nicole was going to put an advertisement for like police officers, cops, because they have a tendency of dying a lot, oh. um, what would the advert ask for? Um, and what were like skills, qualities, to try and attract them to come and work for you? Easily adapts to an ever-changing environment. <laughs> <laughs> um, enjoy. Ooh, how would you how would you word that without giving away what it is? Yeah, enjoys unusual cases, I guess. Um, and. Works well on limited resources. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I would have to figure out how to phrase that you have to work with Winona. <laughs> I'm gonna say because she's, she's flexible a bit of a personality. <laughs> I like that, Nancy. That's good. Yeah. I'm gonna say but Wine is a bit of a hazard on her own, isn't she? <laughs> What's that? Sorry? I said Wine is a bit of a hazard on her own to work with. She's a bit she? of a hazard. Yeah. yeah. But a great one at that. So yeah. yeah. Dom, would you add anything to that advertisement with working with Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> Back off. <laughs> yeah, not, not to, uh, yeah. <laughs> Best be uh, a male. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, so Waverly's done her cheerleading and the Christmas dance, um, so what would yeah. Nicole do if she was going to do something like that for Waverly? I was, <laughs> I was worried. It's coming. Come. Season four. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do? I mean, what's like a sexy skill she has? Like, I don't know Basketball. what I would do. I, I would Naked build basketball. you a treehouse. <laughs> In shorts and nice bra, <laughs> okay. and uh, <laughs> put 
fairy lights inside of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So keep my heart. That's I mean that's more of a gesture, but you could watch. As <laughs> <laughs> I build things on the ladder. Happily. Yeah. I, I, I can see this. I can see this. I can see it too, actually. It's quite sexy. Let's expand on this a little bit, Kat. <laughs> what color are you talking? I'm thinking like slow mo, Waverly comes with lemonade. Yeah. Yay. Right? Yeah. Nicole like casually wipes yeah. the sweat off her brow. She takes it. The, the, the fanfic just writes itself. Um, <laughs> So uh, I've been told we need to wrap it up, but uh, I just wanted to thank both Dominique and Kat for being here at Erpercon UK for giving so much of themselves and their time to everyone in the fandom and uh, for just bringing one of our favorite relationships to life on screen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominique Brevo, Chocolate, and Catherine Burrell.